can a person or a book be a objectivist without being aware of objectivism? As an example, and then he gives a book on guns, which we don't need to know, but let's say he's right. This book is not an objectivist book, but it is highly rational and objective. Now, I get that question in many ways about not just books, but broadcasts, podcasts, movies, a lot of things which the person says, this book is objective, it's rational. So is it objectivist? And the answer is no, it is not. Because objectivism is not the same thing as objective. Objective is difficult enough, but it means within some delimited square, or concern yourself only with facts and logic, not with emotions or desires. With the it is, not the I wish. It is certainly possible for people, even sometimes people who are not too great, to do a book, a movie, a speech, whatever it is, that you will have to say, is objective. He gives the facts, there's a logical uh, connection. It's not based on emotion, it's informal, etc. That is objective. As against, you know, one of the democratic politicians, for example, or the Republican establishment, who utter gibberish interspersed with alleged argument and then make projections on the basis of what they feel, that is not objective. But to be objectivism, you have to be objective because you see that that is the only way to function in reality and achieve your goals and acquire truth. How do you, what do you have to know to understand the grounding of objective, of being objective, and therefore all the things you have to do to be objective? That's where objectivism comes in. You have to, objectivism is a system of philosophy. It's not a book or a speech or whatever. It means that it's a set of principles that cover all the fundamentals of philosophy in metaphysics, in epistemology, in ethics. Not so much, it doesn't really matter what your person's politics is as far as belonging to objectivism. If he follows those fundamentals, he'll one day or other end up uh, being an uh, objectivist or on the, uh, on the cuff of it. Now, if he follows objectivism and he accepts it, and in that framework he realizes reality is independent of us, that's the primacy of existence. Emotions are our means of cognition. That's the role of observation and uh, logic and, and reason uh, and knowledge. There can be no arbitrary and truth. All of that and so much more, you read Opar, all of the whole first part before I get to objective is essential to objectivism and therefore to actually being objective methodically. Now, I would like to see a person who knows nothing about philosophy, but has heard you should ignore uh, feelings and just go by observation. He may be able to, on a narrow scale, and do it, and sometimes surprisingly on a large scale, but as a life work permeating all of his books and as consistency, even in one speech, I say it cannot be done unless it's so narrow that, you know, you don't even need uh, philosophic advice, you'd be objective no matter what. So that is my distinction. Don't denounce everybody who's not an objectivist. He may very well be objective, but it's not objectivism. It's a consequence.